Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we are back with another professional photographer camera review with Marion Sell. Yeah, hello. Nice. Hello. So if you don't know Marion, he's a professional photographer. He handles all our camera reviews because he is better than me. That's pretty much it. Anyway, today we're checking out the Nokia 9 Pure View, which is the phone that has five lenses, yes. right? So, uh, were you excited to check this out? Oh yeah, of course. I was very curious what it's all about. Yeah. So Nokia, with this device, just to give you guys a quick uh, run through, it's got five camera lenses at the back. They're all 12 megapixels. Uh, they all have a f-stop of, I believe, 1.8. If it's not correct, it's on the screen there for you. And three of the lenses are monochrome and two are RGB. So which means, according to Nokia, you're getting a lot of depth map information and you're getting some really nice, you should be getting some really nice raw images. So without wasting any more time, I'll let Marianne dive in and give you some details on what the camera actually produces. Let's do it. I took a photo um, just before sunrise when I was at the airport. Um, quickly, I want to mention something that is that the JPEGs most of the times compared to the raw file come in much brighter, but in this particular case, actually the JPEG has been brightened up by the internal software of the phone quite a lot. So the phone, every now and every, every time you take a JPEG photographs and you have a RAW file coming with it, it actually puts a lot of effort into thinking about the JPEG file and trying to give you a good version of whatever you're taking a photograph of. And the RAW file, of course, comes in RAW. So um, the JPEGs, uh, very generally, they are always coming in quite heavily sharpened. So that's uh, that's something I'm not a big fan of, um, just to get started. Um, the RAW files, on the other hand, they come in pretty well. Uh, this one here, just I want to show you quickly um, that there is detail available in the shadows if you want it. You can always recover it. Uh, but I like the moody look of the of the, this dark scene um, better, actually. Uh, also, the JPEGs most of the times come in with a lot of clarity, which is basically the uh, the local contrast and the local sharpening that happens uh, in the software. And next file. Um, I shot this photo out of the airplane window because it looked like an environment where there's a lot of detail. And of course, now that there are five lenses on the, end, on the back end of the phone, I'm very curious about what does it do to the details. Because at the end of the day, it gives you a 12 megapixel file. So it's basically the same resolution as many other cameras. Um, even my iPhone 7 has 12 megapixels. Um, so what's the benefit of having five lenses? So, um, this is a RAW file and looking at the details, there's so much going on here. And I'm, um, well, I'm not disappointed by what I'm seeing here, but I'm also not overwhelmed with the details that I see in the RAW file. Uh, compare this to the JPEG, the JPEG is screaming sharpness. It's, uh, it's a little painful for, for me to look at actually. Um, also the, the clarity, like you always have a little bit of a halo around edges, like let's say clouds and sky, or in this case mountains and sky. And sky, and sky. Uh, it's a lot of treatment that happens after you take the photograph. All right, here we go. I wanted to compare the black and white and the color mode, basically. On the left side, we've got a raw file of a black and white shot. And on the right side, we've got a raw file of a color shot that I have desaturated. Um, I, these photos have been taken at about five seconds um, from one another. And I wanted to, to know what the benefit is of shooting monochrome compared to shooting color. Because there's one big thing about shooting color photos and then making a black and white out of them, that is you can, you can go into the different color channels basically and you can, like for example in this case, treat the sky differently than you could for example treat a person that would be standing in the foreground. Yeah. In this moment I'm just affecting the blue tones in the color photo and I'm darkening them. If there was a person in the foreground because skin tones are red, I could, I could take the red channel and I could darken or brighten the reds. So this is a clear benefit of shooting in color. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it seems like the monochrome file has a little more detail. In particular, I can see it here on the surface of the water where we just have more little details highlighting. Um, one more thing I want to show you in this particular case though is the JPEG file that comes with the black and white RAW file because the JPEG is crazily sharpened. Um, all the JPEGs that come in with this camera are insanely sharpened. 
as well as there's a lot of clarity in the, in the clouds, which is once again the local contrast. So it gives you some, some weird halos every now and then. Um, even here on the ground, like the grass, the weeds that are growing here, they all, they all have a white frame around them, which is a consequence of a too strong sharpening. And here we are in Photoshop for a very quick uh, display of the crazy amounts of sharpening that uh, Nokia puts on all the JPEG files. This is RAW file and this is JPEG. So you probably see the difference. Each little water drop receives a, a sharpening around it. I'm not a big fan. All right, of course I'm asking myself, what is it really worth to have five lenses on the back of a phone? So um, just because the other phone was lying around, we compared the Nokia to the Samsung 10. And I did three photos, one with the Nokia, one with the Samsung at f-stop 2.4 and one with the Samsung at f-stop 1.5. Those have been taken in the, in the same 10 seconds basically. So a few things that I, I can see is that the Nokia file seems to have pretty much no grain at all, which can be beneficial. Sometimes I actually like grain because it gives you a photo a certain, um, almost like it gives you more that, the feel, that feeling that it's not super digital. Basically, you, you have the feeling that you can touch it a little bit more. Um, let me show you the Samsung at f-stop 2.4, at the more closed f-stop in direct comparison. So, interestingly, the Samsung file has, has a little bit of grain, has more sharpness. And this is a raw file, so it's not been artificially sh sharpened. Um, look at, for example, this area here. I hope you can see the mouse cursor. So this here compared between Samsung and Nokia. So you get more details in, a, in the shot of the Samsung, very interestingly. Uh, look at the World Trade Center on the bottom left. It's much sharper in the Samsung shot. I mean, it's a raw file on the Nokia, so you go ahead and sharpen it yourself. Very, very interestingly, <laughs> the bottom right corner of our Samsung shot is very out of focus. I don't know where that comes from. Um, at f-stop 1.4, even worse. So I have no idea why. But one more thing now, this is f-stop 1.4 at Samsung. This is f-stop 2.4. Do you see the do not climb tower warning? Compare this in sharpness to the Nokia. So it's actually pretty much impossible to recognize the word tower on the Nokia, which on the Samsung is easily readable. Um, it doesn't seem like the five lenses of the Nokia are, are much, much stronger than the one lens of the Samsung in this particular case. Okay, next photo is a photo shot in the bokeh mode of my friend Andre. That was yesterday at the beach when we were kite surfing. And, um, I wanted to show you this one in particular because um, I only took two shots. Um, the phone had a lot of trouble figuring out which parts I want to have in focus and which not. It seems um, like you see that the harness um, which connects to the lines of his kite, um, the lines are partially out of focus, partially in focus. And then uh, the typical bokeh mode thing happened where you've got like the, the, op the subject that is in this case, uh, the kite surfer, is he's in focus, but the way it blurs out uh, between him and the background, it becomes very artificial to my eyes. I'm not a big fan of this look. Also, you get those random moments that are in focus, like for example, the shadow behind his feet seems to be much more in focus than the rest of the of the beach. Uh, it's a very con <laughs> I think the camera had a hard time thinking about whatever we I wanted to achieve, and I don't think that it's very well achieved. So, not a big fan of the bokeh mode. And here's one more shot that we have to show you on the screen of the phone because this is one of those depth images where you can choose the spot you would like to have in focus later on after the, after the take of the photograph. Um, it is, it works, it's interesting. Um, sometimes funny things happen like for example this tree over here which is blurred out in a very weird digital way. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like in focus or almost in focus. Interesting, interesting is I can't really get the, uh, the palm tree, the top of the palm tree into focus, into real focus. Um, I'm showing you this because it is a, a little bit of a gimmick to me. Most of the times when I take photos and I want to blur out the background or the foreground, 
then there is a clear subject in my image that I want to isolate from the rest of the, the background. So um, I don't necessarily understand the benefit of this because most of the times when I take a portrait of somebody, I do not want the horizon to be in focus and the subject out of focus. So most of the times for me it's sufficient to being able to do this when I take the photograph and not after the fact of taking the photograph. So you've heard Marion's thoughts on the Nokia 9 Pure View. It sounds a little mixed there, right? Yeah, um, mixed feelings about the, uh -huh. the results, basically. I, I saw myself getting well excited or very curious about the, the camera when I first saw it because I thought that maybe Nokia is trying something very clever here and by distributing lenses across, like let's say, the, the distance of one and a half inches, I initially thought that they are trying to recreate a tall front element and therefore allow you to get some like real depth of field fall off or something like this. Then I also saw that the lenses are made for, um, by the company Zeiss and Zeiss they have a reputation to create really great glass and there's a series of lenses for the Canon cameras for example, the DSLRs, that, that is fantastic. It's like manual focus lenses by Zeiss, they're really really good and have a re reputation. Mm -hmm. But um, unfortunately the I've, I'm not, not a fan of, of the phone at all. Like, it seems like the, the phone is actually struggling or the photos are struggling to keep up with the other cameras that we've been testing. Um, and then the biggest complaint here is that um, the phone takes forever to calculate and to think about the files you have just photographed. So I tried to get some action shots of my friend Andre kitesurfing and he is really the, the best freestyler I know here in New York. So it's very predictable when he comes at the camera and he starts launching a jump. It's just a matter of hitting the button to get a, a cool shot of him in mid-air. But the, the phone didn't sometimes just not allow me. I get, it was still thinking about the last shot I took, even like five seconds later. And I missed three of his jumps where he was in the air for five seconds and did like crazy backflips, 720, mech twists, whatsoever. Yeah, we, we got uh, a before and after shot, yes. nothing in between from that. So it's impossible uh, taking action photos with this phone and it's very frustrating of course when you're standing in like the cold ocean trying to get a cool shot of a friend who's performing. Yeah, so you also took some, um, some slogans as well, right? I did, yes, because I, I wanted to give Andre at least something at the end of the day because I absolutely missed out on all his action shots, so I tried to do a slow motion. But then the phone got stuck in the middle of filming slow motion and it actually crashed on me a few times, like four or five times, standing in the ocean and the phone just crashed for no reason. So there's something internal, um, maybe... Well, well I, think it's that, I think that just falls on the fact that the processor is last year's processor. It's mm -hmm. the Snapdragon 845 which is built to handle um, uh, two cameras, two or three cameras at yeah. the same time, not five. Not five. So that, uh, that comes into play and that's something a lot of people have said, maybe Nokia should have waited and added, you know, this year's camera, the 855, which can handle more lenses, yeah. uh, things like that. So uh, it's interesting to see how that affected your own capture capability yeah. in terms of taking shots and taking photos. Also, the depth mode we talked about that earlier, and you weren't too much you weren't too much of a fan of the depth mode there because I don't really understand what the benefit is. Most of the times when you take a photograph, there's a subject, and it's very rare that you then after the shot decide that you'd rather have like the tree in the background in focus rather than your subject. So I don't I don't really understand unless you're doing animations with your photos where like the blur or the, the focus moves through the image, then I don't really understand what the benefit is of being able to do it later on. Because most of the times I have a clear understanding of what I want to have in focus. Well it seems Marian is not a big fan of the Nokia 9 Pure View. I think the processing is one of the biggest features that you, you just yes. don't like in this device. So say let's say it gets fixed, say there's a software update that helps speed things up. Yeah. Do you think this is something you can revisit or do you think it's something that is, is worth your time as opposed to well, the other phones that you've seen? You I know, think, so far? Uh, well, there's, there's a chance that people are going to hate on me, on me for this, but I don't think so. No, I, uh, I, I don't see the benefit, I, even in quality in comparison to the Samsung that we just tested a few days ago. Um, no, I don't see a benefit of having so many lenses on the back of the phone. All right, there you have it guys. Uh, Marian has stated and said the true word and gospel <laughs> that the Nokia 9 Pure View isn't worth the time, especially with the, uh, the five lenses there, the, you know, the penta lenses, if you will. Uh, but if you 
like to see some more images we'll leave a link down for you in the description of the raw images i know i'm still going to do that for the s10 plus uh, but definitely check out Mr. Marion Cell on uh, Instagram. His, his uh, page link will be down there in the description as well. Don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment. Thanks, bye.